Hello students, today we are doing lesson 4.7, solving integer equations with multiplication and division. So you need to be writing notes right now in your spiral notebooks. So if you need to pause it because I'm going too fast, then just go ahead and hit pause while, and then you can write down any notes that you need to. Okay, so uh, in the last lesson, 4.5 and 4.6, we learned how to multiply and divide integers. Now we're just going to put that information into the equation. So we have three easy examples. I'm not going to go back over the notes for multiplication and division. If you forgot them, you can go back and watch that one. But I will say them while we're doing these equations. Okay, so on my first example, I have negative 4n equals 68. So I'm going to, since this is a multiplication problem, I'm going to do the opposite of multiply. Okay, this is negative 4n times, I mean, negative 4 times n. So I'm going to divide by negative 4. And over here, I'm going to divide by negative 4. So this part of this equation, negative 4 over negative 4, becomes 1, right? But when we write 1n, we just have to write n because that means there's 1n. And now this side of the equation, 68 divided by 4, I can go over here and do the math. So that would be 1, subtract, and then 4 goes into 28 seven times, and I have nothing left over. Okay, so I get 17. But I need to go through my rules for multiplication and division. And that says if I have uh, different signs, one's positive and one's negative, then my answer is going to be negative. So there's my answer, n equals negative 17. So you're going to solve the equations just like we have in the past, but you're going to use your rules for the integers for multiplying and dividing. Okay, example two is n divided by negative 3 equals negative 15. So same thing again. This is n divided by negative 3. So we're going to do the opposite and multiply by negative 3. Always do it on both sides of the equation because that keeps your equation balanced. So these two cancel each other out, and I get n equals. Now I'm going to do 15 times 3. If you need to go off to the side and do it, you can do that. Um, or if you know what 15 times 3 is, 45, then you just write it here. Now I look at my signs. I have both of them are negative. So if your signs are the same, your answer is positive. So there's my answer for example two. It's n equals positive 45. Okay, last one, example three. These are quick lessons because they're really just reviewing things that we've already done. So example three is negative n equals 37. So this one you might think, oh, I don't have a multiplication or a division here. But remember, if you don't have a number in front of the n, it's always a 1. So there's a 1 here that you just can't see. So that's really negative 1 times n. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. And that makes this n equals 37 divided by negative 1 is 37. And because the signs are different, the answer is negative. Okay? Here's another way to do this problem, a shorter way. If I have a negative on this side, I can just move it over to the other side. I can only do this if there's only one thing on each side, okay? I can't do this if I have like a plus something or a minus something. It's only if that's the very end of your equation. I can move it over here and just do this. And I know I can do that because it's just dividing by negative 1. Okay, so that's it. Do not do this. Do not move this over. Don't do this shortcut unless you only have an n or negative n or negative x equals in a number. No pluses, no minuses, no division, nothing else on the equation. Okay, that's it. Just three easy examples because you've already done this a couple of times already. So just remember that you're using your integer rules from the last two lessons we did. That's it.